Welcome back to San Cedro McClyde. In this one, we head out into the open Laredo Sound and down Price Island. Alex gives a little update on the how the halibut's going, and then the next day I reminisce on being out of halibut. We experience some really nice sailing as we head down towards the Goose Group, followed by a bit of calm stuff, but we don't let that dampen our spirits as we check out the beautiful beaches on the Goose Group, pick up some garbage along the way, and have a very peaceful sleep there. Thanks so much for watching, and if you're enjoying the series, hit subscribe! Good morning from Grant Anchorage. We're in the little uh, spot that's labeled the Northwest Nook on Navionics. And it was beautiful and peaceful here. There was a slightest little bit of swell um, that came in here. I, I would hardly wouldn't, I'd hardly call it swell. It was just a little slight rolling. Um, pretty much just rolled us to sleep. Um, but it was dead calm overnight, despite the gale forecast for Hecate Strait, which we're at the southern end of that forecast area. Though we are on slightly uh, just on the edge of the, the strait. And there's a little bit of a breeze that's kicking up now. But I think it's starting to fill in out, out in uh, the strait here, or out in Laredo Sound. Um, so we are going to clean up and get going here. It's about nine something. Um, so we've had a casual morning um, while we're waiting for the wind to show up. Hey, welcome to the Halibut Diaries, day five. Uh, I'm just cleaning up some yesterday's halibut, uh, getting ready for the next round of halibut. More halibut. Uh, we got some halibut wind out there, halibut swell, and uh, some halibut uh, skies. Looking good. All right, thank you, Alex. Looking pretty mellow out there, but there is some wind up uh, to, up into the Laredo Channel there. Um, so we're I think, hoping that's going to fill in here. Um, and the swell stays really low, so we don't need a whole lot to keep the uh, sails happy coming out of here. off the starboard boat here. Two of them right there. Three of them right there. Oh, cutie. Little baby. Oh, big breach. That guy's breaching over there. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, well, watching Trev up on the starboard shroud. Whales went away. Huh. Bye, transient orcas. Good trip. Well, that was a pretty sweet little orca show there. It went on for a while. There's a big pod spread out. It was real nice. Um, now we're still working away along Price Island here. I think we're probably about seven miles from the bottom of it when we can bear off and head towards Goose Group or see Fourth Channel or wherever we end up going. Um, but the uh, wind is kind of playing with us a little bit. It keeps on uh, turning kind of more southerly and pinching us towards the shore. So we're just watching closely the reefs. There's lots of several areas of reefs that stick out along the shore. Chill sailing continues, though it just picked up a little bit. Um, we've had to do it. We just we just tacked now, um, so the wind was kind of coming coming around and setting us uh, straight towards a bunch of reefs. So we're gonna tack out into the open, probably uh, for a mile or two, three, probably two, and then we'll tack again and um, just carry on itself. The wind's back up again, and we're approaching uh, McInnes Island in the bottom of Price Island. A bit of fog banks uh, are rolling in a little bit. It looks like they're up against the land here. I'm not sure if we'll end up in them, but uh, maybe it's kind of more just marine cloud. Well, we will find out up ahead. There's McInnes Island Light Station just ahead there. A little choppy here to get uh, to the point. There's Catala Passage behind us, McInnes Island light station that we just uh, decided to sail through and it was a little, it's kind of exciting for a moment or two there where the winds shifted a bit. 
but it went just fine and uh, mosey right down the middle of it. It's time for the early evening update. The wind is being annoying, frankly. There's a bit of a uh, lumpy, lump, lumpy, dumpy seas here, but we're still making forward progress. We've got five miles left to St. John's Harbor, so hopefully the wind's gonna pop back up here and get us the rest of the way. We'll be patient for a bit. Yeah, forecast was for northerlies and then southwesterlies. I think we've got none of that. Maybe it's kind of southwest now. Uh, but that's uh, that's sailing on this coast. You get, you get what you get. Sometimes it says northerly and you get southerly. Sometimes it says southerly and you get northerly. Sometimes it says northerly and you get northerly. I think I'm talk, uh, talking kind of slurred because I'm sleepy. Yeah. I'm going to stop talking to myself now. So this certainly beats the wind dying a few miles before the anchorage, but uh, it's, just, it's a little cheeky. We're now bombing along at over six knots, 6.5 knots, with uh, two miles left to go to our chosen anchorage today. So uh, it makes you kind of tempted to want to carry on, but I think we're just gonna stick the plan and head on in there. Often I've uh, got excited and the breeze is good and want to go further and then the wind dies like three miles away. So we'll just carry on here. Um, but pretty nice little way to finish the day after and at times frustrating day, but all in all, pretty fun day out on the high seas, looking out at the open ocean for most of the day. As we came into St. John's Harbor, the wind continued to pick up to probably a marginal gale. It made getting to the anchorage a little slow, but we were just laughing at the fact that we suffered with some pretty mellow and fickle winds all day, only to have the wind really come up as we were coming into anchor. But that's how it goes. Harbor, um, in Dryer Bay of, of this general St. John Harbor area. Um, and there was that crazy wind coming in, but it's settled out now, and there's just sort of a gentle south southeasterly, really probably five knots, maybe a little bit more coming through the bay. But we're comfortable in here, and we're going to have a nice, peaceful night, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. The forecast calls for light wind, I believe, but they had been saying northerly, so we're hoping it's going to be northerly, somewhat light. Um, something for us to at least head towards Goose Group. But... <laughs> Just doing a little dinghy mission here in these funky inner basins of this island. Um, there's probably a lot of loons around here. A lot of loons. Oh, there's one right there. Where, did, where is it? I can't see it. <laughs> Feels like we're in a lake. It's pretty cool. There's this little narrows to get in here. In theory, we could bring Seadrim Clyde in here. There's a spot where at zero tides, five feet. That's super narrow. I wouldn't be doing that because there's no really good reason to come in here other than that's beautiful and calm. All these clips. <laughs> morning. Alex here. Just had a wonderful sleep and we are eating breakfast. I'm getting ready for a variable calm to 55 knots <laughs> forecast. Are we ready for anything? From the north, south, east, and up. You know what? Ready for anything. It's August 11th, day six of the Halibut Diaries. 
And this is in fact the closing day of the Halibut Diaries. The last of the Halibut is been consumed aboard C.J. McLeod. It's a, uh, I have really mixed feelings about the whole situation. Um, having basically all you can eat halibut was a pretty, it was a trip. Um, my energy levels were high. Um, my appetite was kind of low. I didn't really feel like eating other things. We didn't eat any eggs the last bunch of days. Didn't really want the whole, um, you know, more than three pounds each of protein, pro, protein, protein today per day. So we just ate a lot of halibut instead. Um, so I'm kind of excited to expand the diet again a bit. Um, feel sad that we're out of halibut, but also excited at the prospect of going fishing again. So this is the conclusion of the halibut diaries. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed. Um, it was an exciting roller coaster ride of emotions. And uh, that's about it. Um, Trevor Dickinson, fishing license 128397 out. We are on our way out of Dryer Cove, St. John Harbor area. Um, pretty close to Shearwater here. Um, it's been a little showery this morning, and there's been this slight east, yeah, mostly east breeze. It's actually kind of uh, northeast right now. Um, so we weren't rushing to get out of here, but the rain seems to have ceased. The forecast is kind of mixed bag. It's saying southeast. I think it's saying northerly for heck it's straight south. So let's see if we can catch any of that. Um, and then light tomorrow. So uh, we'll figure it out. Lots of little fish boats around here coming from the King Pacific Lodge. Um, definitely a popular spot here for sport fishing. A few other like non um, non lodge people around as well. We met a few folks named uh, Ron and Bill last night. They were anchored up in the little inlets on our dinghy mission. And nice folks, just going fishing. Two two guys hanging out, having a nice time. Two Didorinos. Um, but yeah, it's a, now that I stay here out in the central coast, on the outer coast. Here's our fender we found. Works as a seat as well. Some uh, clothes that got stinky. I put them away wet, not ideal. Now that I clean them and they still kind of smell, but drying them out. Alex Sabolski. You know, I think beating to windward on offshore waters would be more extreme thrashy, but we've been cruising along the uh, last couple days upwind, making some head ground, ground, <laughs> ground head, <laughs> grounding cheese man. <laughs> Go on. Cheese man, it's just cheese man. Yeah. <laughs> we got uh, simply cheese man right there. <laughs> we assume it's to do with that rock there, but it just says cheese man. So, and there's Providence Rock. And a rogue rock that I think is actually 587 feet deep, and I don't know why it's marked the way it is, but we're not going to go right over top of it, because that would not be prudent, and we'd be put, testing our Providence and cheese man. Hello from the north end of Goose Island. We're just having a wee picnic here. A little cheese and crackers and some chips. And a little adult juice. You know, for a little walk. We've been bobbing around all day, so we decided to pull over here and wait for the tide to turn in our favor. Um, to carry on the last mighty five miles on this rather calm day to a suitable anchorage. Though this would probably be fine, but we'd be rolling around. Um, the boat looks fine out there though for now. Yeah, so it's just this beautiful little beach here. Um, there's a um, old uh, Helsic camp here, Helsic First Nation camp. Um, it's called the Rediscovery Camp on the sign here. And now there's the Quay Camp um, over by uh, Hackeye, uh, across from Hackeye Pass that's, um, that's up and running these days after a couple of years of the COVID stop. Um, they got it going again and that one's a Beautiful. I've had the good opportunity to 
be there with Rancos Conservation Foundation um, doing this sort of science um, education during the camp and also being involved and being immersed with the kids as well in the cultural stuff as well which I felt very privileged to be part of in their little big house they call it. It's a beautiful beautiful place at the mouth of the Quay River. Um, this is also a gorgeous spot. Um, I can imagine this spot might have been difficult in northwesterlies to land in. I'm not sure the story um, on why it's not used anymore but it's certainly a beautiful spot part of their territory. Lots of really cool formations of the sand having been blown around with the northwesterlies recently, most likely. The uh, trees and shrubs here behind me are all swept back from the prevailing winds, the northwesterlies and probably southwesterlies that would um, whip around here. Pretty cool, you can definitely tell without a question of where most of the wind comes from around here. Super lush forest here with like a lot of grasses um, just off the beach. Um, it almost seems like it has this intertidalness to it. It's really influenced from the, the ocean right here. Here is some of the beach garbage picked up. Um, I tend to, uh, the boat's a bit full now of garbage, so I'll just take stuff that is small or kind of, I call it high value, like the styrofoam stuff. Um, if it gets left on the beach, it'll just break apart into thousands and thousands of little pieces really fast. I mean, this stuff eventually will, but not nearly as quick as this. So I just, when I don't have any room left on the boat, I put it above the regular high tide line. And then um, hopefully someone with more room or a beach cleanup of some kind eventually comes through and picks it up. Um, rather than getting smashed into little tiny bits and ending up in the ocean or getting back in the ocean. It really can be overwhelming the amount of garbage you come across on these beaches, these super remote places coming from all over the place, all over the world. Um, but any cruisers watching this, um, I implore you to do what you can to bring some back to dumpsters and get it off the beaches as much as you can. Um, I think every little wee bit helps, um, especially going after the stuff that's going to break apart into little tiny pieces like the styrofoam and, and soft plastics and so on. Um, maybe the harder plastics, if you don't have room for it, at least put them up in the above the tide line and there are some beach cleanups that do occur. Uh, you think of an oil spill as being horrible and of course it is and it covers everything but this is sort of like a slow motion oil spill in terms of all these plastics, oils, ending up all of these beaches and smashing into little tiny bits and ending up in the ecosystem embedded in it within animals and plants and everything else. So we are underway on the north end of Goose Island. There's the littlest breeze around and we were going like two and a half knots for a few minutes. Um, but now we're just going to like a knot and a half with the current. Um, gonna try and be patient for a few minutes here, but this is just gonna, we're not very far from where we're planning going, so we'll probably just have to sadly motor the last a few miles of the day. Ended up being a pretty uh, slow day for the old wind with the swell and waves and things making it almost impossible to really sail. So it just knock, knocks the wind out of our sails, any wind that we do have. So forecast doesn't look very promising. Light winds the next few days, or at least the next day. Um, so we'll see what we get, but we're gonna head down to Goose Island Anchorage, spend the night there, and see what we get in the morning work the tides, that's going to be important. There's big tides right now and it's a lot of current. We're finishing a rather mortary day in mortary fashion. Mortaring on into Goose uh, Island Anchorage, or Goose Anchorage I think it's just called. There's one sailboat up ahead which is kind of cool. Um, but looks like a fine spot. I haven't anchored here before and yeah, it should be a nice night here. The winds are totally calm. There could be a little roll coming in. There's a slight swell kind of undulating around here, but it should be just fine. Alex is being a good dude and trying to get rid of some of the little brown streaks that are coming down the side of the boat, probably from the mud coming up on the anchor and then running down the side of the water. Looks like it comes off pretty easy according to Mr. Alex though. We're in this beautiful place, 
sun's come out. Sandy beach is all around, so we're gonna have some dinner and go for a long stroll. Real sweet. We're out for our evening stroll here on uh, Goose Island. The beach is right by the anchorage here. As, as standard, there's lots of garbage, but it's also very beautiful here. Uh, looking out into Pacific Ocean, just uh, ahead of me here. So, this is a unique one. This is the third of these this type of vacuum hose that we've seen. We're guessing it probably has something to do with the fish farm industry. So they seem to shed a lot of garbage onto these beaches. What you got there? Vacuum? <laughs> There's also tons of water bottles, which is just like maddening because it's like water needs to be in a plastic bottle that ends up on the beach, Goose Island. And here's where the beach uh, turns from. Nice and sandy to very rocky behind me carries on. You can keep walking. But we'll, we're both wearing flip flops, so we'll probably turn around here. Our night at Goose Anchorage was just incredibly peaceful. It's those kind of nights you dream about when you're out cruising where you don't even feel any motion of the boat whatsoever. Well, that wraps up this episode. In the next one, we wake up to a nice little breeze and clear skies. But then fog banks roll in as we depart down towards Hakai. It's a very disorientating experience, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. After a quick stop at Hakai, we continue south down towards our jumping off point to head across Cape Caution and back towards the inside waters of Vancouver Island. Thanks so much for watching. I enjoy all of your comments and feedback I get from viewers. And I'm approaching that 1,000 subscriber mark. So again, if you haven't subscribed, hit that button and help me get there. Bye for now.